That's right, always doing it for the love of local music. Good morning, welcome to the Morning Mix on Informante Radio. Script music featuring Top Cherry with that one titled The Way. Uh, Moro Meria. Morning. How's you? It's a holiday. It's a holiday. Day it's 14 holiday. of the lockdown. <laughs> Seven well, days to go. You saw South Africa extended by two weeks. Oh my God. Yeah, it was announced yesterday. They're going to extend their lockdown by another two weeks. So you know mm. it's, it's a ripple effect. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure. But, but you know, South Africa's uh, caseload is growing rapidly at the moment. Yes, it is. So, mm. Completely uh, took them by surprise, I think. Yeah. We'll see. One week to go of the initial lockdown. We'll see if it gets extended. The debate is uh, currently on, actually, nationwide. Everybody's uh, got their opinions on whether we should reopen or whether we should stay in lockdown. And uh, it, it's interesting. I'm actually quite curious to see uh, which way our government will lead. Because, um, I mean, the rate at which we are reporting new cases, has it, it has been slow. And we thought that would pick up, it would grow. But then the testing hasn't been ramped up. And uh, Yeah, I mean, yeah, I get you. Mm. But I think also, like, 16 cases positive out of 333 is a good number. Mm. Um, it actually maybe means it's not really as fast spreading or, or as wide spreading as we assume it currently is. Yeah. Because while like majority, a vast majority, I mean, I'm talking about over 80 percent coming back negative. Yeah. That that's I mean I take there's some goodness there I guess. That is true. And 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 I mean it's been two weeks that uh, people have been in lockdown. Yeah. Uh, we would have been seeing symptoms springing up here and exactly. there. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so yeah, ho I, 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 let's just hope it th th it's good news. <laughs> At least that's what it looks like. So uh, maybe we reacted early enough. And um, <laughs> con contrary to popular belief, maybe Namibians are doing enough maybe. with this lockdown. Maybe we are. All right. Uh, good morning, guys. I see some of you already joined the live stream. Um, we have um, a special conversation this morning with uh, Mr. David Wamambo. We're going to you know, chat to him in a little bit. But there are a couple of other things, of course, that we need to get to. We need to clean house. Uh, uh, if you're an avid listener of, of, of the show, you will know on Mondays we would usually have uh, uh, Sergeant um, Fabian Amukwelele from the Bintuk City Police. He's also the spokesperson of, of yes, the Bintuk City Police. Yes, he's a spokesperson, That's what I understand, yes. Um, now, uh, news, of course, uh, came out yesterday that uh, Mr. Fabian was arrested on uh, charges of rape and uh, he appeared in court mm -hmm. and he was remanded into custody. Maybe you can just... Uh, Shed a bit more light on the story. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll share what what, what, I'm what I can right yeah. now. Um, we understand that the the victim is a 27, uh, I think 29, sorry, 29 year old colleague. Mm. Fabian himself is 37. Mm. Um, it seems the incident happened in January, um, but it, uh, w without really the details. Mm. Um, it was reported in early March, and then he was arrested on. 
Monday, I, I believe, and then appeared in court on two, what is it? What is today's th- th- today's Friday. Today's Friday. So he mm. was arrested on Wednesday and appeared on Thursday. In court, um, okay. Yeah, and bail has been denied. Um, case has been postponed to allow for further police investigations. But that's as far as well, I can reveal right now. Yeah, as much information as we can give you right yes, now. Yes, yes, <coughs> but that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I, you, you know what? Firstly, I actually didn't think the courts were still in session. I thought the courts were also in lockdown. No, no. Um, well, you can't because people have to appear before before court in 48 hours yeah, yeah. so obviously they're closed to the public but for matters where people need special to circumstances s- s- they, they i wouldn't say. even say it's special i think <laughs> people are appearing uh, if we get arrested for anything new you yeah. have to make that appearance within 48 hours you will it's it's, it's obligatory so it's, it's it's just that nobody else can attend so and, and mm. i think sometimes they attend in absentia I don't know if that was the case with him. Like, you, you know, we, uh, I was having this conversation with my wife last night. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, I'm, it's just, I guess, I'm curious. So w- when, when the trial does start, right, how, how, how do they... I mean, because obviously if, if, if we are in post-corona times by then, mm-hmm. um, reporters and stuff would be allowed in the court. How do they protect the identity of, of the victim? Um, it depends. It's usually they would have either in camera mm. um, for for younger um, victims. Younger victims. For yes. for older victims, ex- it's actually not. But what what the reporters are allowed to report in, but we we have a code of ethics to abide by, and we cannot name. You cannot yes. Name the the names of of victims. So even if we are in court mm. and we we are there f- to listen to her give her testimony, mm. we are not allowed to 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 reveal the name. And also the presiding officer does remind the, uh, the courtroom, yeah, and that the, the court in the courtroom yeah. that 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 victim would not should not be mentioned or named. Uh, so far, we haven't really had inc- incidences. Incidences. Mm. Uh, but yes, it's usually not for all the uh, uh, victims. It's usually not an in-camera. Okay, yeah. um, I, I, I'll give you like two minutes to vent because you seem pretty peeved by. Uh, actually, a lot of people were pretty peeved by um, some irresponsible comments because uh, on social media, especially by some yeah. public figures as well. I mean, some yeah. people are. It's okay, we can name yeah. it. It's Miriam Kahuhuena in my case. Yeah, um, uh, I think it was Miriam and, and, and Jericho were the two who were getting some real slack on, on social I, media. Yeah, I didn't see Jericho's um, comments, mm. but um, um, the ones of Miriam Kahuhuena were brought to my attention. They only brought to my attention because I'm always in defense of, of, of Miriam Kahuhuena. And mm. I'm, I'm in defense of Miriam Kahuhuena because um, I feel like uh, my feminism... Mm. demands that I that I, I come at least defend women that are being slut shamed or, or or being called slay queens or anything negative mm. because um, it, it just because you're se- sexual sexually liberated mm. doesn't mean that you should be criticized like so negatively so I've, I've always been an avid um, defender mm. of of Miriam Kahuhuena and, and obviously her right to express herself how she wants to express herself there's nothing wrong with that mm. um, but when she posted I think this was even before the details had come out about this sp- uh, sp- Fabian's case. So mm. she did not have information. Not that it's important, but she did not even have that. Mm-hmm. She ran to social media very irresponsibly, and I hope she's listening, <laughs> very irresponsibly mm. and went to go and, first of all, throw shame on the victim, on the victim. and defend the suspect. That's called a rape apologist. And I hope that we can have these conversations eventually because the reason a lot of victims don't come forward, and trust me, I work with them almost on a daily basis, but the reason a lot of victims don't tell their stories is because of comments like that. Well, mm. we don't believe you. I don't trust women. Women can't be trusted. There's always an agenda. What is your motive? Is it money? Is it this? Is it you, you know you're evil? Mm. And a lot of women opt to like, remain silent because they, they don't want to go through that public scrutiny and their yes. character assassinated like that. So People start digging up on, on you and trying to make you look bad yes, as the victim. Yes, um, and, and it's sad. But, yeah. for example, a person like Miriam Kahuhuen, I would actually have thought I would, would perhaps understand because even if today Miriam Kahuhuen came and said, I've been sexually, I will believe her. It's my mm. responsibility and my job to, re- to, to believe mm. v- victims, you know, or survivors as we like to call them. 
um, but it's very irrespo- it's just very irresponsible and I hope that we're having the correct conversations who don't run to people's defense just because you think you can mm. it, it actually creates it's a I, I always say it's a irresponsible co- um, opinions that have everybody's entitled to an opinion but irresponsible ones have a negative effect a very negative look down <coughs> the line so let's just try to be a little mm. bit more responsible in that regard and and show sensitivity for for uh, victims and survivors and applaud them when they do open a case because we know reporting for rape is very very low because a lot of yeah. victims um opt to just kind of remain silent and reporting a rape by a police officer a uniformed officer uh, i mean whether it was on duty or off duty mm. it's still I- it's probably even more difficult than it just is. any other it um is rape case and i do understand you know fabian has been in the public um domain s- domain for for a long time i've known him since he's almost the face of city police yeah, right really, 2009 kind of. 2010 yeah. back then i've known him for quite some time and, and and i understand a lot of people want to come to his defense because his character yeah does it yes yes so yeah. so you kind of tend to want to look at at, at uh, the victim and think maybe she's the one who was in the wrong yeah, but, but, but uh, that's not the right way to approach the situation yes. if you don't have the facts maybe just keep quiet and wait yes until you have them yeah. if, if you're not naturally inclined to believe victims when they tell their stories mm-hmm. at least do the honorable thing just be quiet so that you're not dominating the conversations or taking the conversation in the wrong direction. Yeah. That's that's always an injustice when you do that. Mm. I, I like I mean I had the same feeling when I first heard the story. That's why I was asking you guys mm. in the group. But um, my inclination was let me rather keep quiet. Yeah, I mean if I if I'm going to yeah. have an opinion, I'll have an informed opinion. At some point, yeah. I'll, I'm going to be informed enough to share my opinion. All right, guys, we we we. <laughs> We are in yeah. a lockdown that is uh, affecting especially um, those of us who are in uh, arts and culture. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is, effect- it is hitting us hard, I see. Um, I mean, there are some creative ways that people are coming up with, uh, you know, doing shows online and, and those live streams and stuff. Um, but at the moment, it is a means of keeping people entertained and not really a means of making um, oh, those yeah, know, yeah. money. Yes. So... Yes. So um, uh, we're going to talk to Mr. David Wamamboye. Mm-hmm. He's the uh, digital. He's a digital marketer mm-hmm. at the Fashion Council of Namibia. Yes. All right. Uh, they've got this interesting project that's going on. Actually, let's give him a call. Cool under pressure. Cool under pressure. Seven, you are still live on uh, the morning mix here on Informante Radio. As promised, we have uh, Mr. David Wamambo on the line. Good morning. Morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. D- down or up? Uh, the music just a bit down. Oh, the music. Sorry. Good morning, David. Sure. <laughs> morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well. So staying Ooh. safe, staying home, social distancing. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's yes. keeping safe. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Mr. David. F- firstly, maybe let's uh, let's just uh, get a gist from you. What have you been doing to keep yourself busy during the lockdown? All right, and most um, a lot of the times, what I have been doing is um, 
keeping busy in the mornings because most of my work um, is creative work. So I do that most of, of the part of the mornings. I do creative work. And from there, I go into self-care mode because within this time, people are a lot of um, are anxious because yeah. of what's happening. You're not sure when you can expect this, the, the, the worst news. Mm. We, for example, South Africa just extended their lockdown. Yeah. So we now anticipate, are we also going into lockdown? What does that mean for business for us? So in those moments, I make sure that I focus on my mental wellness um i have applications that i use mm. i do some home exercising and i i make sure to eat <laughs> very very important make sure to eat yes, <laughs> yes. make sure to eat yes well um uh, you, you are a digital marketer and I, yes. I think right now the whole world is moving into your domain so um yes I don't know, maybe there's a silver lining for you at the end of the line. <laughs> but, but just <laughs> Hopefully. Yes. Um, there's an interesting project that you guys are working on, uh, an open letter that was sent to government. Um, maybe before mm. I butcher it, just give us a, a little bit of insight uh, on, on what that is about, and then we can start having a conversation around it. All right. So the letter is written by a number of creators that came together. Mm -hmm. um, it's in consideration of a proposal that will be handed in today to government mm -hmm. um, with financial pro proposals which can be applied for the creative industry leaders. Mm -hmm. um, for example, are there any payment holidays that can, they, the government can come up with mm -hmm. in collaboration with banking partners that the creative entrepreneurs are working with, as well as financial grants that can be awarded to the creative that may be in need of these funds, mm -hmm. seeing that most of their work requires social activity. And in this current times that we're in, there isn't much of social activity. So business to these people is limited. And it obviously affects their revenue, it affects um, their ability to pay rent, mm -hmm. to afford groceries, their lives and the people that they support are affected. So what we have done is we're disseminating information on that, on how people can contribute to the letter. And so what we basically can tell you now is that we are hopefully expecting that the letter will be presented to government today and then the conversation on how the government can assist the creative industry will start from there. Yeah, that's 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 a very interesting thing because um, creatives are, have been, if I am not mistaken, have been left out of the conversation. Yeah. That's true. Um, in that's terms true. of economical effects. Yes. Um, so, um, what what is the hope that government, apart from like, what what type of conversations are, are creatives hoping to have with government, apart from the tax breaks, which I I, I guess is the banking sector, mm. but with yes. government itself, what 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 do those conversations look mm. like? I think the conversations will be on how best we can secure financial aid to the creative industry mm. and also coming up with ways that they can still continue to have businesses running. For example, some businesses, um, I'll give you an example um, with, with cosmetics. Mm. Some people might not consider it essential, but it is essential for some people to still go for self-care treatment. Mm. So there can be a way around that where you can give... Um, an allowance within a certain time of the day, how many clients can you have in a day, and what measures do you need to put in place mm. for people to come and see you for consultancy if you're a hairstylist or if you're a designer, what measures can be put a, in place? Or a photographer, yes. how many clients can I shoot, you know? Um, yes. Can I have it in my yes. studio for yes. a long yeah. Yes. Mm. So it's conversations like that on how can you still sustain those businesses. Because you see other businesses, for example, um, restaurants, um, shops are still operating, mm -hmm. which is unfair for the creative industry because they depend on this. This is their daily, mm -hmm. daily living, and without that, they can't make any money. Okay, um, it's 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 basically almost like a um, a, a proposal for for some form of regulation around the industry, especially yes. now during the time of of. Uh, COVID-19. The lockdown, okay. yes. Now, now, how do how do other creatives join your course? And by the way, who do you consider creatives? I, I, right. I thought I was a creative and then I was told I. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. In light of what's happening, I think a lot of people usually identify themselves as creatives because you find engineers considering themselves in, in, um, creatives. Mm. So it's a bit of a broad conversation. But mm. in this regard, people we're looking at uh, your artists, 
your photographers, your musicians, mm. um, designers, people whose work is based on their technical know-how of putting mm. things together mm. with their hands. Mm. Mm. Makeup yes. artists, do they also fall under Yes, this? yes, yes. Okay. Yes, definitely. Okay. And, and how do they join your course? Or how do they join um, uh, uh, the petition and also sort of be part of the conversation? Or the right. open so what we have done... No, no, um, it's okay. Go ahead. Okay. So mm. what we have done is we have put up a link on our social media platforms mm. in our bios where they can sign up to endorse the letter. They just add their name. Mm. And once we have their name, that means we have them on record so that when the conversation has begun on what plans or regulation measures mm. are going to be put in place. We have their names and we can submit their names or we can reach out to them that what's your business? Um, well, how do you operate? And this is how government is suggesting you move. Mm. And so that's basically so far that's what we have done. Okay. And, and, and just uh, to sort of put the cut before the horse, um, yes. uh, 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 what 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 are you or what are you hoping for? Let me not say expecting. What are you hoping for in terms of especially um, financial assistance from government? Is there is there like some some idea that you have that you want to float by them perhaps? All right. Firstly, because we understand the economic um, state that the government is in, that our country is in, we would expect the government to give an allowance mm -hmm. for the creators to continue to trade in a regulated way that's sustainable mm -hmm. and it's also safe. But also, if it's possible that there can be financial aid or financial grants, especially from the funds that are coming into, into the donation mm -hmm. for the COVID um, crisis, mm -hmm. if there can be a certain amount that's allocated for creators. That will work well. That will work well. All right. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You, you, you're uncharacteristically quiet this morning. No, I don't want to say to you, you, um, <laughs> for those that perhaps don't know, is David and I are colleagues. We both work on the fashion yes. council. Yeah. So I'm trying to say less uh, <laughs> during yeah. this time. I thought you would be the one who's probing no, me. Next. No, <laughs> it's, it's always interesting when an outsider <laughs> probes, right? Yeah. That's true. Yes, but um, uh, 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 David, is, is, is there something else that you would like to share that we might have, uh, you know, skipped? Okay. Um, we have two projects that we've been working on. Um, one of the projects is information determination on how brands can strengthen themselves within this time, especially yes. creative brands. Yes. Because in this moment, you're not consulting any clients. Mm. And what we suggested as the council is that they come up with ways and use this lockdown period to strengthen their brands. Mm. So we have tips that we are sending out on social media on how they can strengthen their brands and they can find it on our social media because we talk about um, using this time to build brand trust, um, to build brand awareness, mm. to get social proof, to make their presence known in the digital world, as well as building relationships, fostering their communities with people that they've worked with before and just reaching out to them so that by the time the lockdown is lifted, you don't miss out on this opportunity of marketing your business mm. and when you come back with the bounce back plan you already have a community that's aware of your business so utilize this time to strengthen your brand and we are sharing information on that and from monday onwards we'll have instagram live discussions which we are calling the business of fashion and mm. we are having guests from all over the world um i can confirm that our first guest on monday is the former fashion director and the former fashion buyer for Macy's in New York. Mm. He has worked with um, Rock Nation. He has worked with Nike, Spotify. So he has insights that you can give based on what the creators in the Northern Hemisphere are doing to strengthen their brands. So you'll have that information to give to the Namibian community. Mm. I think that's something that they can benefit from. And so what we are focusing on as the council is being an information hub for solutions in this period. That is awesome. Um, I think the tips will especially come in handy because once sure. when you look at a lot of um, creatives on, on social media, a lot of them are very active, yes. but there's no real direction. It's like an octopus on roller skates. It's just which, is, which is unfortunate <laughs> because this is time that you can, where everyone is at home, so you can capture the, um, the audience. Yeah. Because everyone is at home, so make sure that everything that you're doing on social media is purposeful. Don't yeah. just go there and post. Yeah. Make sure that whatever you post has a has an end result that you're aiming for. Mm. Okay, 
Um, uh, Mr. David, uh, just uh, maybe give us your handles on, on social media where people can, can, can follow you and maybe All come right. ask you questions directly if, if need be. Okay. Yeah. So on the Fashion Council, they can follow us on Instagram. We go under the handle Fashion Council of Namibia. And on Twitter, it's FCN, it's FC Namibia, mm. FC Namibia. And then if they want to personally contact me, they can follow me at David Wamambo on both Instagram and, and, and Facebook. Twitter. Mm. Twitter. Oh, yes. Uh, I, yes, Twitter. Um, I wanted to ask David, do you think after this lockdown, is it, is it, do you think it's the brands that are currently doing something that will survive this mm. or... Or um, can we kind of just ex- expect things to go back to, you know, back to normal, to normal immediately well, after the lockdown is lifted? Okay. So, well, generally the, the projections on how the economy is going to play out after the, 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 the lockdown is they're quite negative because people aren't trading as they normally would. Mm. So, obviously, the economy is taking a downfall. For example, the rand is now um, 20 US dollars in value. And that's expensive. And if you go into the shops today, you see that there is actually a difference in the prices. Mm. So consumers are going to be hesitant to spend. Mm. But what wise people would do now is build trust, build a reason for people to want to trade with you after the lockdown. Mm. Why should I buy you? Why are you a necessity? Mm. So it's the brands that are currently active and staying in touch with their current clients mm. and also reaching out to their potential clients that will thrive that is true the best time to market uh, after all is when nobody else is yeah. <laughs> and, and i guess you said something that i think a lot of us don't think about but it is true your audience is at home yeah yes and this this is a, an opportune time to to reach out because you have their full attention yeah exactly yeah all right yes that's true mr david we we really appreciate you talking to us this morning well, thank you for having me. Yes, and, and we would like to hear also how uh, uh, the project develops, uh, especially the response from government and so on and so forth. Sure. Go sign it. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, I will follow the link. I'll also go put my... <laughs> I also want money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Perfect. David. Thank you. Have a nice day. Well, thank you. Have Bye. a nice day, too. All Bye. right. It's the weekend. Yes, it is. It's the weekend. Um, I actually want to read comments. It's something that we have not done it yes, all this about morning. To suggest. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's David Wamambo, a digital marketer from the Fashion Council in Namibia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a very interesting project that uh, very, they are working on. I must say, as somebody that works with him, um, it's for me, I've been able to tap into his knowledge base and just apply to my own business yeah. because he really has a lot of information on these things in yeah. terms of digital marketing and just how to take your business to the next level. Mm. Um, so if... if if there are creatives that want that advice, um, I, I definitely think use his handles, like you said, and reach out. Mm. He's really, really, really very resourceful. All right. Um, uh, we welcome Manier Kleinschmidt <laughs> early, early on the live stream this morning. <laughs> Emily Lowe uh, Breed. Is that how you say your surname, Emily? Um, hope that breakfast was good. It was delicious. Thank you. I was what I was telling you is the old Rice Krispies. So I know <laughs> yeah. p- people that don't follow Rice Krispies, they b- rebranded and brought in a new Rice Krispies with, I think it's got vanilla, mm-hmm. and I just yeah. never liked it. But I think, and I thought, why would you mess with with a brand that is just perfect? Just the, yeah, it's, it's the original. If, if you're going to add add something, don't yes. don't remove the exactly, original. Exactly, yeah. but they'd replace the original. They stopped selling the original ones. But I I went to the shop the other day to get some necessities, and I found that they have the original ones back on the shelf. Mm. So, yeah, it was good to have some old school rice krispies. I can't remember when was the last time we <laughs> had rice krispies. <laughs> or Ma- cereal at all. Uh, yeah, actually, yes. Mm. I, think I prefer jungle oats anyway. <laughs> uh, Marco van Marco, good morning, the Royal House. Good to see you today. Uh, jobless. Thank you, thank you, Shaks. Uh, reopen, please. Business is quiet. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, Emily Lowe, uh, somebody saying hello to you. Uh, morning crew from uh, Ali van Beek. Bradley Kubisep, Aish, there goes that uh, famous name, our very own law enforcement officer. <laughs> Fabian. Uh, Mr. Fabian. I was just saying, like, next to Kanima, he's probably the most well known officer in, in, officer the in the police, uh, city yeah. police. Yes. Pol- city police. Yeah. Yes. City police. Yeah. It's Kanime, Katiti, and Fabian. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rabim Asha. Um, yeah, side chick. That's how they are, Kama. 
it's that is irresponsible my guy mm. uh, you're lucky I, I just started reading before i went to the end of your, yeah. of your, of your comment in any case and, and my, might i just add um the the reason that uh, uh false reporting is 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 very low mm. is because nobody wants to go through that scrutiny nobody wants to be called a side chick or have your life picked apart and yes. have the public judge you nobody wants to go through that yeah. no, forget who you are no no woman especially woman wants to go through that so it's not like you're just gonna wake up and be like oh I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm saying it l- happens in a m- minority. Nobody's yeah. just going to wake up and say, oh, you know what? This guy really broke my heart. Uh, I'm going to go and report him. For you, you're going to yeah. go through the scrutiny. You have to stand in court. You have p- The public is going to look at you. The you're pub- going to yes. be branded for the rest of your life. Nobody wants to go through that. And, and it must be difficult to be um, going through that kind of ordeal, knowing that if you spoke up, people would not believe you. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, this, this specific victim took two months to report it. Mm. Because of that, it happened in January. Mm. This is her colleague, much loved. Ha- people like now, even on social media, yes. that will look at him and say, Oh, he's not capable. No, there's no such thing as not capable. Anybody can be. There's no look. Rape doesn't have a mm. rapist, doesn't have a look. It's not your poor, yeah. dirty, you know. Uh, good and evil exists in every man's heart. Yes. Every man is just who you choose to be each and every day. That's it. Uh, that's the difference. All right. Uh, morning, guys. Always good to see you uh, from Bradley. Uh, Shaks Diofe. So that guy used to come in studio telling us about traffic light um, while he's going to rape people out of green light. Uh, <laughs> insensitive guys come on man do i have to keep telling you this let's let's i mean consider if 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 let's say for instance the the survivor is busy watching the show right now mm. Mm. she's already suffering with her ordeal probably is suffering from 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 some form of stigmatization mm. in 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 the office even imagine yeah. might, might i add for you guys though yeah. i think a lot of men i don't know why but it's almost like you have to use an example of a relative for them to get it. If you <laughs> say, yeah, if it was your sister, then it's like it clicks. Because those are the only ones most we care about. Yes. Like, hey, 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 that's, like, that's yo, like oh, what if this had happened to your sister? Hey, hey, oh, oh, by Excel, diamond, do it, man. You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Then it's like this microaggression now all yeah. of a sudden. But for anybody else, it's like, yeah, well, you know, it's happening outside yeah. my home. Where did it happen? What yes, was she what doing? Yes, what was she doing? Did she tell yeah. him something? Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I get it. Um, Fanuel. Papero, right? Namibia is a very small economy and two weeks of isolation will do harm, more harm than good. I suggest business can open, but most of the regulations still be enforced. Yes. Le- I- I'll put it to you this way. Namibia is a very small country with a very small population. If the coronavirus runs rampant here, it can do more harm than good. Mm. Have you ever thought about that? Um, Tatinawan this morning. Uh, Kanjoko Zedman also saying good morning, crew. Maria, I didn't know that your feminism goes so deep. <laughs> So all this time you have been defending Miriam was simply because of feminism, you mean? Yes. This is not kind of biased, but yeah. No. I respect your opinion, though. Yeah, no. Mm. It is, ge- generally, it is because if I don't know you and I'm defending you, I'm not defending because I know you. Yeah. I'm defending you as, as a woman. And you have your rights. And, that and your, yeah, your, woman, uh, your womanhood and your rights mm. to express them how you want. So it yeah. is exactly because of my feminism. <laughs> <laughs> Bikes Moshikele and uh, Ricky Klassen joining the show as well. Um, Jose Ashikongo, bad sound, guys. Seriously, what's wrong with the sound now again? Today is Easter. Coronavirus never gave us a chance to know dates. Yeah, like yeah. It, it <laughs> I, I I thought we were on a Wednesday. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's Friday. Thank you, houses and and Gaitan joining the show. Gaitan, call in today. Our way. Yeah, we 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 will call you. Don't worry. <laughs> if if we want to talk to you, we will call you. So yeah, Mushili on four. Guys, let's stay home to avoid the spreading of this coronavirus. Let's keep our country safe. John Shombe saying good morning and happy Easter Friday, guys. I wait. Where's the Zag? Zag is the bang. If you can speak, uh, if you can speak Ocean Deutsch with your with your with your banker, you might get a few bucks out of him. <laughs> <laughs> Don James Wandy, morning, guys. Uh, your sound is hot, like in distorting. Please have leave some headroom. Oh on no. the master volume. There's a lot of headroom on the master volume. By the way, Don, you, you, you must send us your CV. You've been looking for, for, for what? Uh, sound engineering jobs. Yeah. 
who knows. Vanessa Guibeb and Robert Gidipo joining the show. Makwa from Makwa, um, also uh, talking about the sound. I think that was a bit further back. I don't know if we still have that problem because mm -hmm. I'm at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the end now. Anyway, Kanjero Zedman, stories about COVID-19 are confusing now. Some are talking about 5G installation, not COVID-19. Just too much. <laughs> Seriously, some of us, we totally confused. Guys, if you have some information about the difference between COVID-19 and 5G, tell us, guys. These two, these two things are in completely different universes. The one conspiracy theories again. Yes. Look, um, there might be some truth to, to the fact that the 5G, uh, um, uh, 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 the radio waves are, uh, sort of affect adversely the human body. Um, they are scattered. Repo like, let me give you an example, right? Because everybody, I've been saying I want more information before I can talk about it. So people are sending me all these links. <laughs> but all the links are conspiracy, conspiracy theories. theories, yes. I remember um, at some point last year, my wife sent me this. She sent me like maybe six links to... Um, that proves that happy wife, happy life is a thing. <laughs> and then I went on the internet and I found like... Opposite. Yes, like five studies that showed happy wife, happy life is not a thing. So yeah. the internet, it just depends on where you're looking. You're probably going to find um, whatever it is, the information. So you, you, you need to be careful. Just try and get your information from credible sources. But, but, but also let me ask, is the conspiracy, is it not a conspiracy theory until it's proven? Because... Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, no, but like, uh, uh, look, everybody's <laughs> jumping, is jumping, and they're making this link um, between the the COVID, especially now, right, between the COVID nineteen and and the five G. Mm. I'm sure if there was no COVID uh, um, uh, around the world at the moment, the different uh, the conversation about around the five G would have been completely different. Of course. But now they're talking about it's the five G that is causing the the coronavirus. This yeah, I don't get the list. This, these theories are out there, so. Mm. Yeah, just be careful, guys. You, you like you can be led astray on the internet. Not everybody on the uh, on the may digital web. May I add? And then they brought it home, right? Mm. And they spoke about somebody then created a rumor that MTC was putting up two five G towers mm. while people are on lockdown. Okay, assuming that you believe the conspiracy theory that five G is mm. responsible um, for for coronavirus. Yeah. Why would our government want to put up towers now? Do they want to mm. wipe so, us out? So you keep us in lockdown and then you put up uh, towers to spread the five G, uh, uh, the, the coronavirus. <laughs> like make it make supposedly. sense. Supposedly, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't really make sense. But like I said, like me personally, I don't I, I still feel I don't have enough information. I, I, don't I, I know a lot of conspiracy theories out there, but I don't really have enough concrete information to give you a detailed report. Um, Anthony Mutato, but just hang in there because we are working on it. At least I am. Uh, Anthony Mutato, uh, we are sending SMS, but the MTC are not replying. I want to know how many minutes does it take for them to reply. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have uh, uh, Mr. Ikanjo's number, so I, 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 can't, I, I can't ask him. I don't know. Um, Jojo says, uh, let's talk more about COVID-19 and less about e-learning. Joe from Rundu. All right. Um, Governor Smareta... I'm on it too. Good morning. Happy Friday, family. Keep well and safe. All right, I, I guess uh, on the stream. Um, good morning, crew from David Valomboleni. Emergency grant wallet is coming on Tuesday. Hook me up this weekend, then I got you next week. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're talking about, yeah, the 750 grant. So yeah. That's, yeah. People are busy asking for money. Like, yeah, I'll give you my next week when my grant <laughs> comes in. Just hook me up. <laughs> Khan man, don't you? How's Okanja this morning, by the way? Mm. I think those are the comments that I have for now. All you, right. you guys are pretty quiet, eh? It's a Friday. It's Friday, yeah. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Ah, oh yeah. So, so uh, on the COVID nineteen front, guys, there are no new cases reported in Namibia. We are still, mm -hmm. as of uh, last week Sunday, I believe, mm -hmm. on uh, sixteen cases. I cannot really tell you how many people have been tested during this period. Um, uh, so, all we know is that uh, currently we are standing at sixteen. It's day number fourteen. Now, uh, 333 were tested last as for the figures for yesterday. For yesterday? Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean in total? In total. Oh, okay. So, 16 out of 333. Not bad. Yes, uh, not it's... I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to work out that percentage in my head. It's, it's, yeah, it's a low number. But like I said, there's always that silver lining, which is, look, zero deaths. Mm. And number two, 
most people are testing negative mm. which is some relief there's a lot of relief there and, and uh, maybe for the most part if you look at like i said yes you have you have your your informal settlements where people are on top of each other but for the most part it's a very open space country mm. we're a big country with a very small population and life lots of open space but we're cramped in the same areas yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, that's why I, I said mm. it's mostly informal settlements because yeah. the the crampness is not in like the city. It's not like apartment complexes after apartment complexes. Yeah. Like you we don't have like a, a million people living in one city. In the small, mm. you know, <laughs> space. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that is that is the information that we have on on COVID nineteen. By the way, you creatives, because I see some of you pop in here every morning. Um, uh, what are you guys doing to to to, to strengthen your brand? Yeah, because <laughs> when when uh, you know there's going to be much, we we were complaining about sto- sort of everyone getting a piece of the pie mm-hmm. before. Well, that pie is going to become even smaller when we come out of uh, the lockdown. Yeah. So so how how are you ensuring that you are going to get your your piece, enough of your piece? <laughs> Easy is asking, guys. Good morning. What happened to Lioness? Lioness is at. Uh, isn't she working this morning? Yeah, uh, we, we're still going to talk to her, but not today. La- Lannis is definitely still going to be a guest. Uh, uh, mm. uh, it's just hold your horses. We're going to yes. have this soon. Just, rece- just relax. <laughs> um, we are not at 16, guys. Doctor said three recovered. No, I mean confirmed cases, confirmed not, cases, not active. Yeah. Only 13 are active. Yes. yes. Thank you. Maybe yeah. maybe we should. When I said 16, no. When I said 16 out of 33, it means 16 have tested positive. Have tested positive. Out yeah. of 333, yeah. that number hasn't changed. Mm. Um, but obviously, if we talk about active cases, we talk about 13, yes. Um, talking of COVID, I hope uh, President Ramaphosa has his exam paper covered because Ahaba is about to copy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Actually, for, for, for once, I if, if, if we don't get any like drastically new cases yeah i'm hopeful that we might mm. uh, i mean I, i'm sure we we're not gonna go back to just normal we, we're gonna yeah. ease back into it and obviously keep monitoring the situation both at home and abroad uh, if 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 obviously i think it's still gonna be a state of emergency but i definitely think the lockdown on on commas and the wrongo will be lifted mm. um that's my hope so that people can kind of continue Bus- it's not going to be business as usual you need to remember even before the lockdown some businesses like Chasco already implementing yeah, this working at home Ooh, and stuff uh, uh, but but at least w- it won't be that crazy restriction that we're experiencing now but we'll see yeah. time will tell we'll see let's hope we keep it i mean there there are there are countries that did a pretty stellar job like um south korea for instance yeah yeah um, By the way, Wuhan is back to normal. They yeah, they're they going back to work. They opened. Uh, they they reopened. They they they, they lifted reop- the lockdown. Yes, yeah. they lifted the lockdown. People yeah. are going back to work, back to school. South Korea is right there, right there in in the shadow of Japan, and th- th- they reported very few. I think t- about twenty thousand cases yeah, or so. But, but the testing has been crazy for for South Korea. Yes, th- that's but th- so that's uh, it's it's what I was saying. I mean, I- with the right response, I guess it is possible to come out of. Um, this coronavirus pandemic with mm-hmm. very little damage done to yeah. both your economy and, of course, uh, the health of your population. Yeah. Um, let's hope Namibia would be one of those cases as well where we are like, that yeah, would be great. Namibia did really well. Mm. All right, guys. Um, it's Friday. Yes. Yeah, it's even Easter. You know, ne? I- even in the lockdown, there are always like one or two cars three cars, four cars on the road, you see people moving. Today, that's school and bogger all about yeah. All I saw is <laughs> people jogging, <laughs> interestingly. Oh yeah, that, that I've been seeing, even in the tour, guys. Yes, people yeah, are yeah, jogging. In the morning, yeah. people are jogging, because you know, normally you probably have to be at work, now you have yeah. that, that spare time. Yeah. And also, just to get away from the significant other in the house, it's like, yeah. <laughs> Let me go yeah. run it off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, yeah, enjoy right. the weekend. Please uh, be responsible. Only seven more days before we end the lockdown, if we are going to end it uh, at the initial 21 days. So uh, be responsible, stay safe, and wash your hands. Oh, wash your hands. Or sanitize them. Yeah, sanitize as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's going to happen to this hand sanitizer companies post this, this coronavirus? Because right. now everybody has learned how to make their own hand sanitizer at home. 
But is it effective? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have corona, so <laughs> it works. <laughs> Alright, uh, yeah, come on, man. Let's go, yeah. let's go, let's go. Ciao, guys. Have a lovely now Friday. Even more comments are starting to come in. Bye, guys. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the Friday. And please stay safe. Uh, yeah. I still kiss, baby. Big money on the track, yeah. Check it. Uh-huh. Keeping natural. Who line your mom, bitch, you, baby. And nobody knows that you are down for me. Baby, they rule.